sacroiliac joints, the low back, the pelvis, the pelvic floor, the hip joints. There's this, this big confluence of important places in the body that, um, you know, kind of when one starts to get a little out of whack, the others can follow sometimes. And there's so much we can do in our yoga practice to support ourselves to get strong. Uh, and there's so many ways that we can um, destabilize these places of the body you name it, you know, walking in strange, funny ways, carrying a purse on one side of the body or child on one side of the body, um, walking in weird ways, doing unilateral movements in your work, having an injury that you kind of like protect over and over again, just, and there's so many different things that can um, make us have a little bit of asymmetry or um, incongruence in the lower back and the pelvis. So we're going to work um, fairly gently today, um, but deeply in the sense of um, striking some awareness in this part of our body um, so that we can, we can get strong on, on like a subtle deep layer, layer instead of like the aggressive outer layers. We're going we're gonna to dive in a little bit today in our practice. So if you've had a history of any problems in that part of your body, whether it's um, your SI joints go out or your low back has had a spasm in the past. Everybody has had probably some experience with this where we kind of know what it feels like to get stopped in our tracks a little bit and have some pain that it alters our capacity to enjoy the way we move in our body. So as you sit comfortably, first just um, find a, a support. So sit up on something that makes it so that when you're sitting, your pelvis, your hip joints, are a little higher than your knees or in line with your knees. So if you look down and you notice that your knees are higher than your hip joints, put more height underneath you until you feel at ease. And then go ahead and reach back to your buttocks and pull your butt cheeks out a little bit so you can feel your sit bones, ground yourself on your sit bones and allow yourself to feel your pelvis, the pelvic floor, the sit bones, the way your pelvis is balanced and um, notice if you always sit crisscross, like if you're sitting cross-legged, I know not everybody can sit cross-legged and might be in Virasana instead, but if you are in crisscross, notice if this is how you always sit, if you always cross your legs this way. And if that's the case, I want you to, you know, take the load, road less traveled and let's switch our legs. So you're gonna have to do the whole thing all over again, change the cross of your legs, adjust your sit bones, get comfortable, and now you might feel like you're living on a foreign planet. You know, you might feel like, oh, this is not familiar or comfortable or usual in my body. Something as simple as crossing the legs. So let's go ahead. Hold on. I'm going to try to change my screen. One second. There we go. Sorry, everybody. Okay. Um, so as you sit cross-legged with your legs crossed the way you don't usually cross them, let's just take a moment to close our eyes and sense into that. So if you're habitual, you know, we, we start crossing our legs when we're very, very young to sit. Uh, and it is a very well-trodden path in our body. So as you cross the other way, if that's what your body's able to do, um, just notice the alertness that the nervous system might be alert like something's different, something's unusual, something's uncomfortable because of its unusualness. So let's settle into that and now feel where are you in your pelvis? Can you sense um, that you are grounded, that you have um, a sense of the pelvis as a broad basin to support your spine from? Is there any supporting you need? Do you need something under your ankles or knees? Is there any adjustments that you need to make so that your grounding is where it needs to be? Okay. And then notice the spine. See if you can pay attention to how your spine sits on top of your pelvis. Do you tend to lean forward or back? Do you have neutral curves in your spine or not? What does it feel like uh, to balance your head over your spine? Do you tend to lean forward? Most of us do. We, we have a leaning forward. Even just from the act of staring at a phone um, or a computer, we tend to lean our head forward a bit. So just see what it feels like to drop your head back. What happens to the heart when you drop the head back? And does it feel like you can balance your head on your spine or is this also an unusual sensation in the body because it's not habituated? So 
So align yourself as best as you can. Feel the roots of your pelvis broadening. Ground yourself down, let your legs rest. A lot of times we grip our hip flexors. So see what it feels like to relax your hip flexors. And then just settle into the breath. Settle into the ways in which your spine and your breath dance with each other. Relax your eyes, soften your face. So much of what we do in yoga is to cultivate the capacity to sit well for meditation or presence of any kind. So notice if pain's creeping in anywhere. If you get pain between your shoulder blades, if your head feels heavy, if you feel like your breath is changing or difficult, just notice the ways in which maybe you aren't as self-supporting as you could be. Let's bring our palms together at our heart, bow in. Offer an intention, what do you need from your practice today? Grounding, spaciousness, freedom, anything specific in the body, the mind. And then let's release the hands and come off of your seat and onto your back. So come fly down. And as you come onto your back, just take a moment to first just let yourself rest on the floor and notice the change in your spine here. What happens differently when you lie down? Is there any um, discomfort that goes away or discomfort that comes? Is there a shifting in your breath or the way you can feel your heavy limbs drop into the air? We're just going to very simply start with just some integration. So feel that sense of expanding with the breath from your navel um, or anywhere else that is in your center that you kind of feel to be your center. It doesn't have to be your navel directly. It can be above, below, your heart, anywhere that feels like your center at the moment. Now let's go ahead and breathe in to stretch out into our fingers and toes, maybe wiggle the fingers and toes a little bit, and then exhale and breathe back in. Anyone who has done yoga with me for a while knows about navel radiation, the sense of expanding from the center outward to the tips and drawing back in on the exhales toward the center. So let it be subtle. So we're not having this big starfish movement that we often start with. Let this be more energetic where you feel that you're like a wave that can radiate from your center to your edges and then back home again. And let this feel integrating to the body that you feel at one with your whole being. It's different than feeling your muscles or joint spaces or movement patterns. It's just a, a subtlety of the body is breathing. The whole body is breathing. And then we're gonna play around with this a little bit. So now expand from your center out to your right foot and your left hand. Feel that chain all the way through. Notice if there's any missing links and then come back in, drawing the foot and hand back toward the center, and then change sides. And your limbs can be as far away from the midline or close wherever you want them to be. So be in a comfortable place where you can feel that expansion out and now drawing back in toward the center. And let's repeat that. Right leg, left arm, feel that cross hemisphere work in the body, expanding and then integrating back into the center. One more time on the other side, expanding away to your foot and your hand and then integrating back. 
Now let's do unilateral, left arm, left leg, stretching away from the midline and back to that feeling wherever the center is for you. And then the right side, expanding away from the center to your edges and then honing back in toward the middle. One more time, each side expanding away and then drawing in. Expanding away on the right and then drawing in. Now let's just do upper body, two hands, two arms, stretching from your center to your edges on the breath in and on the breath out, integrating back toward your center. And then the legs, stretching from your navel to your toes. And it doesn't have to be a physical feeling of stretch. We're just expanding and then back in. And now let's do all your four limbs. And we're going to add the crown and tail in just a moment, but feel the four limbs and then come home. And now add the crown and tail to this feeling that you're expanding the two edges of your spine and then drawing back in. We're going to turn this now into our more fluid movement pattern that we always do. Stretch into your limbs. And as you exhale, we're going to pick the head up and the knees come in. So feeling that full, all six extremities expand away from the midline and then all six extremities curl in to your center point. Find this integrating with the breath, opening the breath out, big breath in as you expand out. Feel that it's less about your body movements or muscles and more about just integrating the energy of your body. One more time. Feel all six of your limbs. Is anything lagging behind? And then draw it all in. Knees to chest. Rest your head down. Keep your knees in and circle a few times. And just sense what's here with your SI joints. Uh, I, if you're being very gentle with sensing into your iliac joints, spin the other way. Just notice as you move, can you feel the sacred iliac joint press into the floor? And right, now we're going to come in, knees pulling apart and knees back in, just warming the hip joints a little bit. And then I want you to find not a super wide, so you don't, I don't want you to pull your knees as wide apart as they will go. Find just a neutral, um, a little bit of the abduction. So your knees are pulling away from the midline, but it's almost like child's pose feeling where you're not super duper wide, where there's tension but you're wide enough. And now we're gonna move the pelvis and the sacrum a little bit. So anterior tilt the pelvis and then posterior tilt the pelvis. So with the sacrum, what you're doing is nutating. So the top of the sacrum lifts as the tailbone drops down and then counter nutating, tailbone lifts up, top of the sacrum drops down into the air. So a little seesaw between an anterior and a posterior tilt of the pelvis and a conjoined nutation and counter nutation. So usually the sacrum and the pelvis kind of move in the same direction, but not always. So let's just feel the nutation and anterior tilt and the counter nutation and posterior tilt. And then I want you to put your feet on the floor, hip width apart. And we're going to continue just doing a little bit of pelvic movements. So if you're ever in a, you know, in a bad way with your pelvis or your SI joints or your sacrum, sometimes these more subtle, simple movements can be a real boon to being able to restore movement patterns in the body if you're feeling spasmed or locked. Okay. So now let's add the pelvic floor to this as well. So we're moving the sacrum, we're moving the pelvis, the spine obviously is moving too. So as we arch the back a little bit and move into that anterior tilt, widen the sit bones, feel the pelvic floor broaden. And then as you posterior tilt and draw the low back toward the floor, hug the sit bones toward each other so that we're almost like we're opening and closing the pelvic floor along with the anterior and posterior tilt of the pelvis and the nutation and counter nutation of the sacrum and the arching and rounding of the low back. Feel how all those rhythms have syncope, you know, they work to, or they're syncopated with each other. They move together. 
So now how is your breath pattern with all this? Can you breathe in as you expand the pelvic floor, drop the tailbone, arch the low back a little bit, anterior tilt, and then breathe out as you navel to spine, pelvic floor lifts up, posterior tilt to the pelvis. And just a couple more times, you might notice that your start, your back is starting to feel the effects of this. All right, and then let's come to neutral. Feet hip width apart, rest here for a moment. And then let's windshield wiper our knees. Just let the um, obliques open up a little bit. Let the low back be nourished in this way. All right, and now to wake up the deep core, which of course is our primary stabilization forces for the low back and the sacrum. Uh, and the pelvic floor really, you know, so, so much relies on the deep work of the core. So we're going to put our feet flat on the ground, knees are up. <clears throat> you guys have all done this with me. Imagine a teacup on your left knee filled with tea and drop that knee into the hip. So stabilize the left femur bone in the joint. And we're going to open up the right knee out to the right. Don't spill your left teacup. And then uh, you're going to bring that right knee back up and put the teacup on the other hip. Now, if you want something a little less precarious, like a um, heavy sandbag feeling on your right knee, dropping down into your right hip, whatever you're visualizing that helps you root the femur bone. And we're just going to go back and forth between the two sides. So your knees come back up and then you stabilize one side and open the other and then bring that knee up and stabilize that leg and open up the other. So just going back and forth, left and right, breathe. Where do you want to breathe? You know, for me, I tend to want to inhale on the knee out and exhale on the knee in, but maybe that's different for you. Try the most important thing you're doing is not letting the deep work of your pelvis and your abdominal muscles translate into holding the breath. So we don't want to hold the breath. We want fluidity in our muscular strength, pliability, mobility. We do not want concrete, especially in our pelvis and our SI joints and our back. We have to move so much in this area of body when we walk, when we move. So we want to have stability and fluidity simultaneously. And the breath is the gateway for this. So just back and forth. Now we started with the left knee stable. So let's end with the right knee stable, opening the left knee. So when you get to that, that'll be your last one. And then once you're done, just rest here, knees bent, feet on the floor, and feel what just worked hard. Okay, so there's deep muscles. You know, here we are lying on the back. We're not, it's not like anything super vigorous, but there's a lot of deep stability that comes from this. All right, bring the knees into the chest, rock around a little bit, soothe any tension pattern you have in your low back. And then the last thing we're gonna do before we come off of our back is take your right hand and scoop underneath the bottom of your knee, top of your shin on your right. Left hand is on the top of your femur or the bottom of your femur bone right above your knee. So we're scooping our hands above and below the knee. The knees stay hip width apart and in line with each other. And now push your hands and knees into each other. So we're doing oppositional work here. This is stabilizing for the SI joint when we don't move. How's your breath? And then relax. And now we're going to switch. Scoop left hand on top of tibia, below knee. Scoop right hand on bottom of your femur bone right at the top of your knee. Keep the knees in line with each other. Don't let anything move. Press knees and hands into each other. And just notice if one pattern feels more familiar, just like when we were sitting and one pattern of cross-legged felt more familiar than the other. Change sides. Let's repeat both sides one more time. Make sure you're breathing. What do you feel when you do this? And then relax and change to the other side. Do you have one pattern that feels familiar? All right, and then relax two knees into the chest. Let's go ahead and roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. 
Okay, so here we are. Let's start with some grounding first. But so before we even move into cat cows, feel the roots. See if you can extend, like we did on the ground, that integration. Can you expand into the floor with two knees, two hands, and then integrate back into the center? Feel that your limbs are connected to your center. Feel that yielding force with the earth. And then when you're ready, start to move your body into cat cows. So it's very easy to be less mindful, to just plop your hands and knees down onto the ground and start moving your spine around. But see if you can integrate so that you're not just feeling the spine movement, but how the movement of the spine impacts your feeling of connection to the floor, to the feeling of your breath, to the movement of your head, your shoulder blades, and your pelvis. Feel how your spine integrates to the rest of your body. How is your breathing? Who cares where you're breathing? Inhaling, exhaling, just make sure you're breathing. Try to open up some windows. Let the discs have some room. And then come to a flat back and we're gonna swish our tail like a fish or like a dog wagging its tail. So, but let this kind of ripple through to your head, to your shoulders. So you're going from side to side and you can feel your spine have lots of articulation in lateral movements. And then we're gonna complete a full movement of that. Turn your head to the right, look out over your right foot and let your left hip push out to the side a little bit. And then come back to center and move the other way. All right, now come back, shake out your hands if you feel like your wrists are bothering you at all. Now we're gonna move some circles in our pelvis. Okay, so instead of just swish, swish from side to side, we're going to um, do some paintbrush circles. You guys have all done this, I'm pretty sure. So imagine your tailbone is a paintbrush and you're painting a giant circle on the wall behind you. So try to get as much range of motion in the circling of your pelvis as possible. And you know, you'll feel some anterior tilt and broadening of the pelvic floor in one position and then a posterior tilt and a closing of the pelvic floor in another position. So just sense how the movement of the low back translates through the pelvis, the SI joints, the hip joints, the pelvic floor. And go the other direction. Are you breathing? Which direction, you know, like if you were hula hooping, which, which is your way, you know, like which, which circling of the pelvis feels like a natural pattern to you? Probably the one you just did because I didn't say which way to go. So I'm sure you did your familiar pattern first. So just notice if this is less familiar, can you integrate? Can you feel and connect with how the body can be symmetrical or not symmetrical, but move evenly in two different ways? All right, so let's stretch back towards child's pose. Stretch your arms wherever you're comfortable. Let your low back relax. Imagine your breath traveling kind of right down the center channel of your spine and feel like you have a little bit of an inflated balloon to breathe into on the underbelly, the anterior surface of your sacrum. Let this balloon that you're feeling kind of expand the SI joints, expand the pelvis. All right, come back onto all fours. Feel free to shake out, roll your wrists around if you want. We're gonna take the right leg, stretch it straight back behind you. Before we lift the arm, Feel the wrapping, feel your strong glutes wrap around your SI joint. Can you feel the ways in which your muscles hug onto your bones? And then integrate, find your teacups again. So both knees drawing into the pelvis, feel the deep transverse abdominis in your core, and now stretch your left arm out in front of you, out to the side or back, but off the floor. So there's an integration of balance. Feel the muscles of your spine. Feel the integration of the cylinder of support around your core. Imagine a block in between your thighs to hug against. Integrate the knees into the hips. All these little tiny things. Make sure you're breathing to feel the fullness. Wrap, wrap and hug muscles to bone. 
and then place that hand and knee down, second side. So, you know, when we have um, our arm in the air and our leg in the air, so start just with your legs, stabilize across the sacrum, and then add the arm. When we hug in opposition like this, it's very good for the sacroiliac joint. It hugs onto the sacroiliac joint very well. So this is a really good stabilizing thing to do, not to mention it, in, it uh, flexes and strengthens those little tiny muscles in between one vertebrae to the next. So this is a deep, it feels like not a big strong pose, but it's a very deep integrating posture, something that should be done regularly. Breathe well. And then let that go, place the knees back down, turn this into dog pose. Bend your knees a lot here. Just let the back, low back lengthen. We've already done so much for our back, so just nourish it. You can wag your tail, you can pedal your feet, you can sway a hip, anything, any kind of movement that's going to help you integrate. And then once you find your way into the feeling that now you're in dog pose, can you do that same thing we did on the floor where you're stretching out from your center to your limbs, all six limbs, so include your crown and tail, hands, feet, stretch to your limbs, and then hug back in. So it's energetic. It doesn't have to be a big physical movement, but feel that integration of all your limbs toward your midline, toward your spine. Can we revel in the way we're made? Isn't it beautiful that you have this very deeply articulating center channel in the body. Let's appreciate our vertebrae, our spinal cord, this deep center line in the body. Breathe deeply in and out, melt the head. All right, and then walk your feet forward and come into Uttanasana. Fold in half. Feel free to swivel and sway anything that your body needs. Inhale for a halfway lift, and then exhale and melt back down. Feel the sit bones lift and widen, the pelvic floor broadens. You can bend the knees as much as you want, and then relax. Push off your feet, roll up one vertebrae at a time or a big swoop, whatever feels good. Reach the arms up in the air, open your body up, expand out, and just take a moment to open your shoulders how you like to open your shoulders. Maybe you want to roll your wrists around, maybe some big circles, maybe some small just shoulder circles. Just find the upper body a little bit, and then expand, open your chest, cactus, open the arms, and then exhale and round in. Take your feet hip width apart, gentle twisting here, so we're swinging. Open up your obliques and start to strengthen them a little bit, wake them up. Make sure you're not locking the pelvis down. So we want to move our feet. So as you turn left, let your right heel lift up. And as you turn right, let your left heel lift up. You can have the arms in any way that feels good to you. So integrate the twisting action of your spine now. Feel your core, support this, and then start to bend. So hopefully you have some wide space. Bend your knees. So we're swinging over. And then swing the arm up, up, up. Feel the side body get longer. Start to integrate some movement of squatting into this. How's your breath? All right, and then steady yourself down and come into a squat. So you adjust your feet, elbows inside your knees, extend the spine, integrate your femur bones into the hip joints, feel balance between your two sides. Ground your feet, feel the four points of your feet root. Can you still expand through your breath, energetically into your limbs? And as you exhale, finding that way back home to the center line of the body. And then let's go ahead and stand up, reach the arms to the sky, heel toe your feet in, and grab a block. Okay. So find a block, stick it between your thighs. We're going to um, move through a vinyasa with a block. So now I want you to imagine that all the integrating we've been doing in the core includes your inner thighs as well. So a little um, hugging. Don't vice grip the block, so don't make indents in the block, but just integrate 
uh, the inner thighs with everything else. Let's start in chair pose. So use the squatting we just did, the warming we just had with our thighs. Let's come into a chair. Arms can go anywhere arms want to be. You can be in a traditional chair with your arms up or any other thing that supports your breath and your shoulders best. When you're here, that gentle hug, see what it does to your pubic symphysis. If you're not sure what your pubic symphysis is, there, your pelvis is actually two sides, two bones, and they, can, they, they join together at your pubic bone. It's not really a bone, it's a joint. Your two sides of your pelvis join together and there's a big cartilaginous ring right there and it's called your pubic symphysis. So when you hug the block and engage those adductor muscles, can you feel a little energy in the way your bones connect at your pubic symphysis? Breathe deeply, take the femur bones into the hips, your teacups, move your teacups into your femur bones, all the way into your hip joints. All right, inhale, stand up straight and tall. Exhale, we're gonna keep the block, fold forward, bend your knees as much as you want to. Relax your head, soften something. Take a breath in, halfway lift. Maybe your hands are on the legs or the floor. Lift and widen your sit bones. And then exhale and melt again. A little inner spiral. So if the block was gonna go anywhere, it would pop out behind you. Place the hands down onto the ground and waddle your feet back, little tiny steps to get all the way to dog pose. Expand away from your center, hug toward your center, use the breath. Can you imagine that your body still lives between your hands? So when you hug your hands toward the midline, can you imagine that your whole center, you're hugging toward your full center line? and feel that integration through your torso. So you're not leaning on your shoulder joints for this posture. Lift and widen the sit bones. Can you feel that slight counter, I mean, sorry, mutation and anterior tilt to the pelvis? Ever so slight arch of the low back, not enough to be an actual arch, but a neutral lumbar spine. Widen the sit bones, inner spiral of the thighs. Feel how the inner thighs connect to that anterior tilt movement. Let's come forward into a plank. Hold steady here. Now, if you're not happy with planks, just put your knees down on the ground and you can still be hugging to the block um, even if your knees are on the floor. So if you're in a plank, stabilize, just like in that dog pose. See if you can feel that full line of support from crown to feet. Hug your hands toward the midline. Breathe in. So there's a lot of strength that lives here. Can you find the breath hiding anywhere or not going somewhere? Bring it everywhere. Inner spiral of the thighs. Sit bones a little wide. Feel the transverse abdominis. So can you bring your front hip bones toward each other? Okay, and let's come down. Place your knees down onto the ground. You can take the block out for this if you want come all the way to the floor. We're gonna put the block back in in a moment. Roll the shoulders a few times, just feel any snap, crackle, pops in your shoulder blades, and then rise up to Cobra Pose. Don't go big or go home, it's a subtle pose. Exhale and melt back down. Feel the integration of your 360 core, of the glutes hugging onto your sacrum. Find your way up with that integration. Extend on your in-breath, to your limbs, exhale, and find your way back home again. Let's come back up onto all fours. Find any kind of movement that makes your spine feel good and stick that block back between your thighs. And you get to decide the width, the, you know, where you put the block, how wide the block is. Place your hands back down and find dog pose again. Inner spiral of the thighs. So the very tops of your femur bones roll a little bit back. So the block feels like it's gonna stick out behind you. Widen the sit bones, feel the spaciousness. Breathe deeply. And then walk your, waddle your feet forward. Take little, little steps here and there. Come back into Uttanasana, bend your knees. See if you can feel the tip of your tailbone lift 
so that you rock the top of the sacrum and waterfall it toward your spine. Rest your head. Halfway lift now, so legs straighten out. Hold whatever feels good. And then exhale, bend your knees again. Come on up to stand, chair pose. So squat again, hug the block gently. Put your arms anywhere you want them to be. Find the rooting. Not only is the weight going into the heels a teeny bit more, but we're rooting the femur bones back. Feel the work in the deep low belly and your hip flexors, your psoas muscles, even your TA when you do this. Breathe, how's the lumbar curve? Is it nice and soft and neutral? Not hyperextended, not rounded. And then stand all the way up, arms to the sky. Exhale and release your arms down. Take the block out of there for a moment. Find your breath again. Arms up to the sky, deep breath. Exhale and fold forward, relax your head. Notice the difference without a block, halfway lift. Exhale, we're gonna step our left foot back, come into a lunge. Imagine you still have the block between your thighs, so you're stabilizing with your inner thighs to help you keep the pelvis in a neutral place. So this will support your SI joints. Come on up. When you're ready, notice where you are in space. So if you overarch the back or push the femur bone in that back leg forward in the joint, what happens? Everybody try to drop the tailbone, lift the pubic bone so you're a little bit more neutral in the pelvis. Soften the back knee as much as you need to. And then reach yourself into that energetic expanding away from your center. Find that hugging back in. How do you balance your SI joints in a pose that's imbalanced? Can you feel the inner spiral of your thighs? Can you feel the pubic symphysis find itself? Can you feel the deep core supporting? Find different ways to feel structural support instead of just leaning into the pose. Okay, relax the hands down onto the ground. Back foot comes forward, fold. Bend your knees as much as you want. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, left foot forward, right foot back. Come into a lunge on this side. Find your imaginary block between your inner thighs. Hug into it, extend the spine, feel the length of the crown and the tail. And when you come up, notice where your tendencies lie. First of all, is this your favorite side or not? You know, everybody's got patterns of habituation. So just notice if this is less familiar in your body or more, feel the midline. So hug an imaginary block between each thigh or like on the inside of each thigh, Feel that translate into your pubic symphysis stabilizing. Find all the little ways you can stabilize your sacroiliac joints and your back by finding these smaller muscles. When you bring your arms up, can you not lean into your low back? Maybe you wanna bend the back knee a teeny bit to find the integration of your pelvis. What's gonna give you that sense of expanding without compressing into your low back? How do you integrate? Can you bring the ASIS, those front hip bones toward each other? Can you lift pubic bone toward navel? Can you feel the pubic symphysis? Where are your SI joints in space? Are you pressing hard onto them? Are they locked? Do you have a little room to have that balloon breath into the anterior aspect of your sacrum? All right, and then release the hands down, step back to a plank. Now we have no blocks, so just integrate. Feel that sense of stability, finding the midline. Deep breath in and away. Coming down to the floor, find your sense of stability. You get to the side, try to find the symmetrical posture. You can have your legs wider if that makes your SI joints feel better. You can keep your legs on the floor. You can only lift your legs. You can lift all your limbs. Your arms can be back or forward or out. Find a back bend that stabilizes your low back and your SI joints. Use your core and then relax and melt back down. Come up onto your hands and your knees 
and just swim around a little bit. Feel your swish and sway in your spine. We're gonna come back to that integration of bird dog. So right leg straight back behind you, left arm out in front of you. Take a breath, expand out to your limbs. Exhale, draw into the midline, elbow and knee coming toward each other. Let's do it a couple more times. Inhale to expand, feel the length. Exhale to draw in. Inhale to expand out. Exhale to draw in. Inhale to lengthen the limbs. Place the hand and knee down onto the ground. For, find all four points of contact. Yield into the earth. When you're ready, let's switch sides. Take your other leg out. Left leg out, right arm. And remember, the arm can be out in front of you, out to the side or back. Integrate, feel the hugging onto the bones. Expand on your inhale, hug in on your exhale. Feel the both the muscular strength and the energy of reaching away from the center core and hugging back in. Can you still have that faint hint of the block between your thighs? And then place the hand down onto the ground. Come back to child's pose. Decide where you want to be in space. Knees close, knees far. Breathing well. Okay, we're going to come to lie down on our right side. The right arm is underneath your head to support you. You can always choose a blanket there. Your knees are bent. The left arm comes up overhead and your fingertips touch the center of your crown. Take a deep breath in. Well, first of all, stack shoulder over shoulder, rib over red, pelvis over pelvis, so that you're not rolling forward. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, we're gonna pick up our feet and our shoulders and head. Exhale and come back down. Or I'm sorry, inhale and come back down. When you do this, just like any sit up kind of feeling, we don't wanna crank our head. Our head is just the passive recipient of the pose. The work is in the side. Okay, so exhaling to lift the feet and shoulders, inhaling to come back. Make sure you're breathing as you do this. Let's do one more. All right, and then we're gonna come rolling onto our back. Pause here for a moment. Feet are, knees are bent, feet are on the floor. And just notice the difference having done that on one side versus the other. Feel your quadratus lumborum. This is a very deep low back muscle on one side of the spine. I mean, you have two of them, one on each side of the spine. Feel the left, how you worked it, not the right yet. And then let's switch and go to the other side. So now we're on our left side. Our um, left arm is supporting our head. Now, if you can't, if your shoulder is not comfortable with your fingers on top of your head, you can do this with your hand on your side. You know, there's lots of ways for you to find this pose in the modification that you need it to be. So we're going to exhale on the way up, feet up, chest up. Inhale on the way down. We're staying on our side. We're not rolling onto our belly or back, and we are not cranking on the head. See if you can isolate this action to be in that deep quadratus lumbar lumborum. Of course, your deep transverse abdominis is going to work too, as well as your obliques. These are all part of that cylinder of support for your back. Let's do one more. Make sure your head is happy. And then we're gonna roll over onto our back and just pause here for a moment. Just sense in to the work that you've been doing. So you know, you know, we're not doing a whole bunch of aggressive standing poses. Can you feel the, the workout that these deeper muscles are getting in your body? 
we can turn these muscles on a lot when we're moving around in everyday life, taking a walk, washing the dishes, bending over to pick something up. We can really support the health and well being of our back. Let's start to move, in. grab a block, have a block candy. Okay, first without a block, we're going to lift up into not a high bridge, but just notice once again the patterning of your body. Do you have one side that likes to lift higher, faster, more? than the other? Do you have one foot that grounds better than the other? Do you tend to, you know, what's happening in your pelvis on the way up and the way down? So the psoas muscle, these deep hip flexors that are so stabilizing for the spine, when you move slowly in bridges, you get both a concentric and an eccentric contraction in these hip flexors, which is a really good force to have to stabilize. One more time, slowly up. Are you breathing? And slowly coming back down. All right, so hold the block between your thighs. Let's reconnect those adductors. Give a, before we move anywhere, give a squeeze. Feel that pubic symphysis again. See if you can feel that you're connecting, that the inner thighs are just an extension of your core. And now we're gonna lift up into a full bridge and you get to decide if you wanna rock onto the tops of the shoulders and get real high in this pose. Make sure your neck is happy. You're not compressing the neck into the floor. Feel the movement of your feet that we do all the time. So push your feet away to engage your quads. Pull your feet toward your shoulders so that you engage the whole back line of the body, the muscles along your spine, your glutes, your hamstrings. And now hug the block to feel that pubic synthesis, to feel the integration in the pelvis. And then pull your feet apart from each other to feel how your outer hips can support you, the gluteus medius. Do you have strength more and dominant on one side than the other? Now see if you can integrate all of those movements of the feet. And see what it feels like to have lots of support as you lift yourself into a bridge. Breathing well. Breathing fully. This pose does not have to be a giant back bend for it to be very integrating and supportive for the body. Lower yourself down slowly and rest. Take a breath. Melt. And then relax. We're going to roll over onto your side and grab two or one blanket, um, long fold for underneath your pelvis. Okay. You're gonna lie down on your back with the blankets underneath your hips, one or two, whatever feels good. And first, just a little bit of leg up the wall so you can with me out the wall. You can lift your legs straight up in the air, feel the integration of the femur bones. Um, now our teacups feel the tea pour into your pelvis instead of, you know, grounding into the pelvis. Feel a little fluid in that. All right, and then we're going to cross right thigh over left thigh and bring the knees toward the chest. So stretching the hips a little bit, finding your breath. And then come on up, legs back straight up. And we're going to cross left thigh over right thigh, knees into your chest. Unwind your legs, tap your feet down and scooch over onto your right hip a little bit and then bring your knees up and drop them. You need a block, sorry, I meant to tell you, you need a block. You're gonna put a block underneath your shins so that your shin, you know, you don't want your knees going lower than your hips here and because your hips are high, 
You want to support underneath your knees or shins as you twist. Breathe here. up your knees, put your feet down, tap them down, lift your hips, scooch them over to the right, knees come back up, move the block to the left, support underneath your left shin or your left knee. Melt the body. And lift the knees. Maybe bring your knees to your chest. Maybe, you know, you can go all the way to Halasana if you want to. You can come into Happy Baby, whatever. Just let your back rest for a moment. And then um, when you are ready, there's no rush. Um, we're going to move into the, a constructive rest position for Shavasana. Um, you don't have to stay in this the whole time, but I'm going to teach you. I've taught this to you before, but you need a nice long strap. If you don't have a nice long strap, I'll show you a plan B. You're going to start out with the strap behind your buttocks, kind of tucked underneath your buttocks. And then we're going to cross the strap in front. Okay, so you start out with it below your buttocks and then crisscross the strap in front of you and then wrap it around behind you on the top of your sacrum and then strap yourself in. So you wanna adjust it so that the buckle is in the front, okay? So that you're not laying on it. So I have the one strap started behind my buttocks, crisscross in front, a wrap around to the back and tie the strap, okay? So the one strap in the back is above my buttocks and below, or but like on the top of my sacrum and then below my buttocks. Then I'm going to come down onto the ground and lie down. And you might need to adjust the strap and make it a little snugger. You're going to take a block and stick it between your thighs and then take, actually do this first, take the strap that was just below on the bottom side of your buttocks and slide it down your legs a little bit so it's on the outer mid thighs. And then stick a block between your thighs and then adjust. So you should feel that the cross across your pelvis is kind of pulling your pelvis, your pu your, your, the two sides of your pelvis toward each other, um, supporting the low back by having the strap across your sacrum, not in your low back and make it as tight as feels comfortable for you. Block between your knees so that your knees have something, your legs have something to touch against both on the outside with the strap and the inside with the block. If you don't have a big, big long strap and you're just using like a bathrobe strap or a short yoga strap, wrap the strap just around your thighs with a block in between your thighs. So you're just hugging your thighs toward each other and the block in between so you're stabilizing that way. But if you have a long strap, try this. It's called constructive rest position, CRP. And when you are here, you just gotta learn to relax. So sometimes it takes a little time um, to let your nervous system respond and just get comfortable. If you are having a day where you're having either an SI joint instability moment or a low back spasm where you really can't do yoga and you can't move around very much, doing this posture is one of the best things that you can do to try to integrate that feeling of restfulness and, and soothing to the ways that your pelvis, hip joints, pubic symphysis, SI joints, low back might be freaking out, okay? So as you rest down on the floor now, find the integration of the breath in the body. See if you can move the breath into the pelvis. Nothing has to move. So no anterior, posterior, nutation, counter, nothing. Just rest the body. 
Feel the support of the props. Sometimes this pose takes a while for it to do its magic. You have to be here a bit. It's not a two minute pose. It can be like a 20 minute pose. Not that we have 20 minutes right now, but you might have 20 minutes right now. Rest your head. Rest your spine. Rest your hips. Breathe well. If at any point this pose becomes not comfortable, you can always make a change, but give it some time. Sometimes it takes a little time for your body to really melt and ground into this. Stay with the softness in your face, the ease of the shoulders, the fullness of the breath and bring the breath into the pelvis, swirl it around in your hip joints, in your pubic symphysis, that anterior balloon on the front side of your sacrum, the sacroiliac joints, the deep low belly and low back. yourself back into your breathing and if you feel like staying even if this is something that feels good to your body right now you do not have to come out of this you can stay for as long as you want but if you're ready to transition out of the posture let's go ahead and first just try to take the strap off so 
and unbuckle it or loosen it pull it over your legs Just decide what kind of movement your body needs to transition out of Shavasana. As you come up to sit again, be slow, take your time. Once again, finding some height to put underneath you so that your body is comfortable. And maybe sit in that unusual cross-legged position again if you want to cross the other leg on top than you're used to. Once again, feel the length of your spine. Drop your head back. Let your heart be the leader. Melt your legs. Let's bring our hands to our heart and offer your prayers, your intentions, your energy. Send your love outward. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Glad you're here.